Welcome to Planning Ahead with CMS. So, I've got a question for you now from my colleague Mark McMurray, who's based in our Glasgow office. And it's very much linked to some of the problems we're seeing in real estate transactions as a consequence of the Hillside decision, both from the Court of Appeal and from the Supreme Court. Unfortunately for you, it's another nasty scenario, John. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, if you're part way through building a building, and you have sold off part of the site mm. that that planning permission covers to somebody else, um, which is within the red line boundary. Mm. And they then go and get a planning permission for something else mm. on their site rather than implementing the original one because you've been daft and you've not compelled them in the private law documents not to do Indeed. that. Which you should, by the way. <laughs> which you should do, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> on that plot, they go ahead and commence development pursuant to their outline, their, their drop-in planning mm. permission, which is obviously very, very bad. So, the first question is, would completion of works that we've already started pursuant to the existing planning permission, mm. so the first one, on the retained land, mm. be unlawful? So I think the way I look at that uh, is... It, it obviously, the starting point, it depends whether um, the drop-in that the purchaser of that particular plot of the wider development land, uh, whether the drop-in authorises development, which means that the first mission is physically impossible to build out completely in a material way. Um, if the answer is yes, then who's do we have a problem, to be fair? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so clearly anything that's been done already uh, is, on, is, is not something that could be enforced against because that goes back to the Supreme Court's observations that the Hillside and Pilkington are effectively prospective in mm. their effect rather than affecting anything that's been done before the offending later permission. So anything that's been constructed is okay. Um, can they finish the job? Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not without a regular... I mean, the reality, I suspect, is in most scenarios, the local authority is going to be sympathetic to a, a regularising consent, mm. uh, not least because if... Well, not least because they, they, they've obviously taken the view that that development's a good thing. If it's housing, they'll probably be including it in their five-year housing land supply. Um, where it gets more problematic is if there's been a change of circumstances. So obviously in Snowdonia, um, although it was a national park throughout... Um, there's no way that anyone will get 401 dwellings yeah. in the National Park now. Maybe you've got a controversial development, it might be a green belt release or something like mm. that, and there's been a change of control. So there's mm. always a bit of risk, but potentially it, it may affect, certainly under the existing permission, mm. uh, without a regularisation, it may affect the legality of um, future works to complete that which has already been started. Which is crazy, because that really means yeah. you could end up with a half-built house. Yes, it does. And that's why um, I think a key um, message for um, the promoters or, or master developers of uh, owners of a, of a large development site which is going to be sold off in parcels, uh, a key message is to um, regulate in your um, sales uh, contracts, regulate what the purchaser can do by way of um, subsequent applications made by them. Now, it may be that it's rather than preventing them making subsequent applications, there's a right to be consulted, mm. a right for consent, consent not to be unreasonably withheld, um, so that you have a degree of control over um, what is done. Otherwise, you, um, you've got no, no ability to stop somebody one, de depriving you of the ability to rely upon your, the rest of your permission. Which, of course, is a big problem in a difficult mm. market because quite often you know, land assets are not particularly liquid. There aren't lots yes. and lots yes. of willing buyers. And if they're not willing to enter into that term, you might lose your sale, yes. which, you know, is a fundamental problem for a lot of our clients. It, it, indeed. And it, that probably then brings us back to the concept of a severable consent. And I think going forward, this doesn't really help those who've um, already got their main consents, but going forward, those who are acting for or seeking um, permissions for large development of that sort of nature which is anticipated to be sold off in plots mm. it might be that th those plots are the um, parameters of the severable elements that are mm. described as severable and then you've immunized yourself at least to some degree against the issues in question it may also be in some cases the developer might want to go back and, ch and change you know their existing consent to one that is severable I wonder if you could do that with a section 96 there. I Yeah, very good question. Uh, I 
I doubt it in all cases. I think you might need to go back with a full permission for full um. permission. The reason I think you, I doubt it is, and I'm, so I'm not sure, that, I'm not precluding the, 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 this in some cases, but obviously if it's described as cerebral and the permission is expressly contemplating that bits of it may uh, come forward without, without the other bits, mm. uh, and therefore is that material in planning terms? It might be thought if there's a high prospect that you're only going to get two thirds that could be different in EIA terms, the benefits you know, could be different, etc. It might be said against that, of course, well, the effect of Hillside is that even if a permission isn't described as severable, you still may not get the whole of it because there's no requirement to complete. Hmm, that's interesting. So I need to go back to some of Mark's other scenarios now. <laughs> so he asked whether you can go ahead and complete the works that have already been started. I think you've been pretty clear mm. that you're not sure that you can. No. Um, but then I guess the question is, where do you draw up the line in this situation, especially if it's not clear um, from the planning permission at what point the works mm. or a particular set of works has been completed? Mm. I, mean, I, I think that the, to my mind, the, the two key red lines, I'm going to say red lines in the sand, that's a sort of mixing of metaphors, <laughs> is um, the date at which the drop-in was, com was commenced mm. um, and, or, and or the date at which the works were done to commence the drop-in, which rendered the first development physically impossible in a material way. And then what is, again, what is or isn't material. Um, but ultimately, if you've got half a building or, or, or half a street, um, in, under the first mission, and it can't be physically built out, then that's well, that's tough luck. <laughs> that's what the Supreme Court said, and that is what the situation on the ground at Hillside. I've actually been to Hillside Park and did a site visit uh, in the Maybank holiday last year. I think I saw you on one of your podcasts. Yes, I did. I that. did. Do, but very good memory, I did. So the first phase, which was built out, is now sort of B and B accommodation. You might remember when the lockdown restrictions being lifted there was one may bank holiday weekend when the only show in town was self-catering yes and so i spent that at hillside in a self-catering apartment and yes good memory it's a lovely balcony overlooking the Abu Dhabi valley i remember it well <laughs> excellent devotion to one's clients yeah, as indeed well. so well thank you very much for today charlie i really appreciate you thank coming you. along and answering our questions and i'm sure all the other people at cms who posed you these horrendous exam <laughs> questions very thankful well, thank you too. <laughs> thank you all for the questions it's been a real pleasure Thank you, everybody. Please join us again on our next episode of Planning Ahead with CMS.